listen to the noise already. Oh, lovely switch from body to head. Really good combinations from Klitschko. Good, good shot, Zora. Good right hand. Lovely work from Vitali Klitschko here. Vitali Klitschko is world champion again. It's on. And you're in. Welcome to Box Nation. My name's Steve Bunce, as it says on the screen, and this is our final countdown show as we get ready for a fight we've been talking about for a long time and following closely for a week. Derek Delboy Chisora's tilt at Vitaly Klitschko's WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World in Munich. Well, all week it's been, well, it's been nice. Let's not mince our words. They've thrown snowballs. They've been shopping in Munich. They put their arms around each other. But today at the weigh-in, thankfully, it started to turn a little bit serious. There's Derek on the scowls disguise. He's got that scarf on round his neck. All very serious and sedate. It's a weigh-in for a World Heavyweight Championship fight. There's Derek showing us his guns, flexing his muscles. Not a lot of smiles. There's Vitaly. Not a lot of smiles in his life. Look, checking his weight. Yep, they've all made the weight. They're big heavyweights. Not a big problem. I'll give you the weights a bit later on. So far, so calm. But you know what we have to have in heavyweight boxing? We have to have a face-off. Watch this now. Let's get it on, shouts Derek, and Vitaly shouts back, Who are you? Who are you? But you know what? Did you see the faces of some of those German, Ukraine, and Russian officials? They genuinely couldn't believe it. Now, a man that knows Derek Delboy Chisora better than most is in the studio with me. It's the man that first took Derek aside when he walked through the door at the Finchley Gym many, many years ago. Johnny Oliver joins me in the studio. Johnny, thanks for being in. Before we talk in general about, the, about Derek's history and his life and in the ring, were you surprised looking at that slap? Were you surprised at that? Uh, not really, Steve, no. He's uh, been a loose cannon for some while, and that's why I'm not with him in, any longer. So mm. I took him to the first four pro fights, and, you know, I don't need that as a coach. Just looking at that, is that a good move or a bad move? He seemed to shake uh, Vitaly, both physically <laughs> and a little bit mentally. I think uh, my, Vitaly might shake him a little bit later on. but <laughs> well, well, we'll find out. I'm not sure. I'm going to hold back judgment on whether that was a good or a bad thing for a little bit longer. In fact, I'm certainly going to hold it back until... <laughs> I speak to the man himself, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Derek Delboy Chisora is on the line now. Good afternoon, Derek. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you? <laughs> Derek, um, we've watched the slap here. Have you seen it back yourself on German telly? Yeah, I haven't yet. Not, and, I mean, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, any regrets about slapping Vitaly, the world heavyweight champion, today at the weigh-in? No, no regrets. I'm just, uh, you know what? Uh, Next time I see his brother, his brother will get one as well because, you know, uh, they messed me up for 18 months, you know. They offered me a 5K2 promotion and then Shani, they didn't give it to me and then things happened, you know. And next time I see his brother, his brother will get one. Well, yeah, his brother has to turn the other chick and give me the other chick because he's going to get one too. So that's what it is, though. It's the fact that, you know, since about October 2010, these guys have offered you one fight, 72 hours it fell out of bed, offered you another fight and then pulled out. So that was just the hostility you had inside you. Is that what it was? Yeah. You know, um, as I said, when I see his brother, he'll get it too. 
No, no, Derek, they're, they're, they're all week long, though, and in the build-up, you and him seem to be getting on famously, perhaps a little bit too famously. So was it was it your plan all along at some point before the first bell yeah, to put him know, straight? You know, as, a man, as, a, as a man, that guy's a very, very, very cool guy, you know. Yeah. But in business-wise, you know, they're like, mess me, mess, mess me about, you know. Uh, that's why I had to, like... That's why I had to react like that, you know. I just fought about it when I was on the scale. Like, I, you know, this guy's messed me about. What, what? Maybe he might do that tomorrow again, so he's not fighting again, you know. And then suddenly, oh, I'm back to square one. So now I know he's going to come fighting. Were you a bit surprised by his lack of reaction, Derek? Or did you move out too quick for him to throw anything? Well, you, you, you know, I was pulled, pulled back, you know. They pulled me back, you know. I would have stayed in his face. You know, uh, I, you know I'm, I'm not scared of no man. You know, and 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 I need to I need to rephrase something which my old trainer John Oliver said. You know, uh, Go on. I got enough I got love enough love for John Oliver. I don't you hate the man, but you know what? It's like it's like a kid. It's like Lennox Lewis said it before. You know, it's like when you in college and then you start going to university, you need a different teacher. So this is why I moved on to another different teacher because <laughs> I want to graduate in my sport. You know, and John Oliver is two training amateurs, so. Uh, there's no, there's no bad bun on me and John Oliver, and at the same time I always told him if he wants to come back, he's welcome to come back, you know. But seems like he don't like me no more for certain reasons. But I don't really care anyway. No, he's, he's, and he still loves you deep inside. Trust me, I've been chatting to him and I know him. Derek, oh, now listen, you've come face to face. He's come face to hand with with your hand. Um, was there anything you could tell also from the way he reacted? Were you looking in his eye? Were you intent? Were you looking at the people around them? Because it looked to me like they were genuinely shocked by your action. Oh yeah, man. You know, you know, this this guy's here, man. They always think uh, they know everything, man. But you know what? We are uh, asking we like to fight a lot, so uh, so we're bringing the fight to them. Derek, now obviously the the, the thing I'm gonna obviously say now is. Can you control your emotions once you get in the ring tomorrow? Because if it only occurred to you when you were on the scowls to slap his face, will you be able yeah, I can to control keep emotions. a check? I can control my emotions. It's fine. I can control that. It's fine. It's easy. And Derek, do you need him, finally, and I'll let you go and I appreciate that, do you need him to be a little bit wilder, crazier, and a little bit more emotional? No, I need emotional? him to bring his A game. Okay. I need him to bring. I need him to bring his A game. Basically, I need him to come. You know, I want to bring the old, old Vitali back. You know. Yeah. And I know he's going to come to fight. So it'd be great for the for the for the sport. You know. Uh, you know, everybody will want to watch this fight now. They now, want to see what's, what's going to happen. Yeah, they certainly do. Now, Derek, and finally, 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 my triple finally. Uh, what's the latest prediction from you on the outcome of the fight? Round eight. Round eight. <laughs> We're still on round eight. Yeah. Well, listen, Derek. What's up, Michael? Sleep well. See you in the morning. More than that, see you tomorrow night in the ring in Munich. Derek Dell watches all. Thanks very much, Derek. Bye. Bye, bye, Derek. Well, uh, clearly no regrets. John. Clearly, no. clearly no regrets about the slap. Looking at looking at the way you saw you saw Vitali react. I mean, he looked absolutely stunned, didn't he? Well, it's a shock thing. It, it, it's, um, lack well, shouldn't of they have been prepared for something like that, John? Not really. This is a sport. This is a sport. You, you, to me, uh, Derek has brought this sport into disrepute. You feel that with that? Yeah, I, I, I never taught him to do that. Yeah, but, but, but other heavyweights in history have done far worse. You know, Lennox, know Lewis has, Lennox Lewis has traded punches on TV shows and Mike Tyson bit Lennox's leg. <laughs> didn't help, didn't hurt the box office, didn't yeah. get them banned. But at the end of the day, it's disrespectful, isn't it? To, to do a thing like that. I mean, the Klitschko's are sportsmen. You know, they're, mm. they're gods in Germany, and he's gone a, done a stupid thing. Um, if, if I'd have been the coach there, then I would have walked out, he would have been on his own. That's why I'm not with him. So it all, add, it yeah. all adds to it. Let's talk to a man who's out there. Let's talk to a man, if I'm not mistaken, who is, uh, who is out there. No, yeah, we were, we we're trying to get hold of um, Frank Warren in a second. He was out there. I think he was at the way, and if he wasn't at the way, and he was in a cab going from the airport to the way, and it was probably as shocked as anybody when that came across the airlines because you know, come across the airways because that was a slap you could most definitely, definitely hear. Do you think that um, 
But you can see why Derek's done it in some ways, John, because he's got to try and get under the skin of these guys. They, they wear that big protective coat which no one can penetrate. David Hay tried for three years and didn't penetrate it. It looks to me like Derek's got more of a rise out of Vitali than they managed to get out of any Klitschko period. It might well be so. That, I mean, Derek's not frightened of anybody. I, I, no, can, I can give him that. He's not frightened of any man on earth. But having said that, I still say that's the wrong tactics to do. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 think, I think you've got to try something. Mm. I think they've tried for, for two or three months to try mm. something, and I think they've had, a, they've had a meet, a sit down. Derek's sat around with Don Charles, and they've said, you know what? Let's push it a little bit. Let's push it a little bit. Anyway, we're going to speak to somebody now who, who was out there. I'm not sure if he was actually at the way, and we'll find out when they call him. We'll talk to uh, Derek's promoter, Frank Warren. Frank, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Frank, were you actually at the weigh-in? No, I wasn't. My flight got delayed, so I'm on my way. So, you, so you, you, you got it on your phone. It probably went ballistic about a second after it happened. It did, and uh, I'm quite surprised, actually. But uh, I haven't seen it yet, but everybody tells me that uh, apparently Derek... Uh, yeah, it's a good slap. It's a proper slap. It's not a push. It can't be misconstrued. It's not like one of those football slaps that you see, you know, when people claim they were slapped and fall over. Now, this is a proper, proper slap. Now, Frank, um, it's dividing people online. It's dividing people all, o all over the place on whether or not, uh, whether or not it was it was too much or whether or not it's all part and parcel of the game. Have you actually? You haven't seen it yet, have you? I haven't seen it, but I will tell you one thing. Go on. One thing for sure, Klitschko would not have known about what else he said, it, but it certainly was not, nothing that was arranged. Klitschko would have been aware of it. Oh, no, listen, that's absolutely obvious. Klitschko has got no idea it's coming. His reaction is priceless. He genuinely, he almost shakes and he starts to raise his right hand and people are in the middle. I mean, he, he's about to bite, he really is. That's the, that's, that's the sound that we love. When, when you're doing, you know, there's one problem when you're doing television and you've got people, one guy in a car in Munich and another guy here and another guy there. So we, we, we'll get hold of Frank Warren later on. We'll speak to also John Rawlin later. We, we, we'll speak to other people later on the show. It happens. It's what, it's what live TV is all about. It happens. Don't panic. It's normal. Johnny, you, you heard Frank Warren saying there, and this is dismissing one or two of the things that people are saying online. They're saying, oh, no. Klitschko was in on it. He didn't look no, like he was in on it to no, me, did he? No, no way. That was that was no purely. Way. That was a pure off the cuff reaction. What you get, from, and and Don Charles had nothing to do with it either. No, you think it's just Make Derek? No mistake. <laughs> Derek Chisora is a loose cannon. Yeah. That's why I'm not with him. Now, um, John, what was he like? What was he like when he first? You know, you tell us about the first time. Big Del boy, and he was Big Del, <laughs> walked through the doors at Finchley. Where are you at that stage? He'd been working for about 43, 44 years or whatever it was, or 42. Yeah, somewhere around that time. But, um, I was introduced to Derek Chisora. Somebody come to me and said, look, we've got a big fella interested in boxing. Yeah. I said, OK, bring him along. And this guy said, well, and he was a little bit frightened, this guy. And I said, well, bring him along. So he said, OK, well, he brought this guy along that evening and he was about at that time 18 19 years of age about 18 19 stone wow that's a lot overweight and i was talking to this this guy and um derek as he was i was introduced to him he kept glaring at me and glaring at me and glaring at me within two seconds i thought well it's going to be off here in a minute Oh, so you and you and you and this big yeah, 19 year yeah. 19 year old um, 20 stone kid that this, he had the chip on his shoulder like mount everest <laughs> seriously uh, and I'm the old school, and I said, just hold on a minute. I said, you and me in the office. That's exactly how it went. And you and me in the office. So I took him in the office, shut the door. Me and Derek Chisora was in there about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we left the office, and we've been friends. Ever since. From that day, ever since. Oh. Now, eventually he won, he won the uh, novices. National Novices. Yeah. And the same year he won the ABA heavy, uh, super heavyweight title and he won the silver medal in the three nation, four nations at that time. He eventually won a Lonsdale belt. I turned, I turned pro with him for four years, uh, four fights, sorry. Uh, because he's such a loose cannon, I didn't want the aggravation. I said, Derek, get on with it. And, but the day he won the 
uh, Lonsdale belt off of Danny Williams. He came into the Finchley gym and threw me the belt. Threw me the Lonsdale belt. He said, that's yours. And that's the respect that we've got. Still well, got. And you could tell that even on the phone there where he was saying, listen, we're not together. I still, I still, love, uh, I still love you, Johnny. Stay there, John, because um, earlier on, well, after the slap, as it's going to be known, slap gate, the slap incident, the slap addition, the slap fight, after that, we, uh, well, of course, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't send our man, John Rawlin, to try and just get a word or two or three from Vitaly. This is what happened. Derek, quick word for us. Obvious question. Why did you do that? The guy needs to come and fight, and we're going to fight. Do you think you've got under his skin? I better got under his skin because I'm going to be under all over him and come, come tomorrow. What did you see when you looked into his eyes? He looked shocked, to put it mildly. He's gonna get it, it's not finished yet. Where's my coach, where's everything? We drive the champ, Vitaly Klitschko, it says there. You have responsibility for my coat, I'm out right now without coat. Where's my coat? Why are you so angry, Derek, why are you so angry? I'm in a fight mood, man. What do you think, I come to play games? I'm all cool, I'm Mr. Nice when it's nice. You know, I can give you what you want. I ain't come here to play games, I come to fight. What do you think this is? Do you hate Vitaly? I, I hate him because he's messing up the spot. And I'll show you and I've got proud to prove it now. And I'll show you when he comes Saturday. Oh, well, I tell you what, that's a sexier, that's a sexier piece of film than the slap, to be honest with you, because that was genuine as Rawlin was charging down the stairs. You can see Dell seething, and when he gets down, he's seething. Then he hasn't got his coat, and he puts on a gilet that's sleeveless, that's priceless, it's timeless. Then he gets the scarf around his neck. But you saw Derek there for a second. You really saw him bite. Anyway, the man who was on that, what, what, what's almost like a Mission Impossible, John Rawlin, joins me on the line now. Good afternoon, John. Hi, Steve. John, fairly tetchy, fairly angry and fairly shocking scenes at the weigh-in there. Well, you could argue that uh, what we saw was, was bad for boxing. You could certainly argue that, uh, and say with some certainty, that Vitaly Klitschko was certainly not expecting that. That slap went out like a, a rifle shot across the, uh, across the weigh-in, and, and Klitschko's face was reddened by it for minutes afterwards. Uh, Derek, was, Derek was clearly furious and was on the edge after that. And uh, what, he, what you can certainly say about this, Steve, is that he has wanted to get under Klitschko's skin. He's achieved that. He's wanted to make sure that Klitschko came in there and wanted to have a fight with him. He's achieved that, and he's certainly got the sort of uh, sort of exposure which is going to give him headline uh, headline coverage across all the papers, all the radio stations, and all the television stations in the country. So his mission accomplished in many ways. Now, John, before the slap, before Derek got on the scales, in that sort of ten or fifteen minute melee and huddle that we're so familiar with, did you get a chance to see Derek or talk to Derek? And was there any indication? You're your old hand, John, experience. Did you sense <laughs> anything coming? I thought he was going to try some sort of stunt. Okay. Uh, we were talking about it last night, and uh, we didn't quite know what to expect, you know. And uh, uh, from my wise head, I was just, I was sort of just saying to anybody prepared to listen, just make sure he doesn't do something so outrageous that the fight winds up being called off. I, I, thought, I thought all along he was going to try and pull some sort of stunt to get at Klitschko and make him realise that he's in with a street boy, if you like, a street dude, yeah. as he'd call himself, and that, uh, and that this wasn't going to be just another fight. This is going to be somebody who was going to fight him on his terms. And I think, I think it was premeditated, and, uh, and to an extent, I think, it's, I think it's worked. Now, whether or not it's going to be, whether or not you, you say it's good for boxing and whether or not the British Boxing Board of Control will take any sort of action as a result of this, or whether indeed he's in some sort of breach of contract, well, those are all arguments somewhere down the line. But for the moment, Klitschko was really, really angry out there. And I think that uh, it's, put a, it's put an edge on the fight, which was, which was not there before. John, there has there been any word from either the WBC officials who were present the way and the German officials or the British Boxing Board of Control Supervisor or anybody from K2, the Klitschko Brothers Promotional Company? Any suggestions that there may be some kind of fine levy? Any, anything at all like that, John? Well, Charlie Giles, I think, who's the uh, 
main man at the British Boxing Board of Control will be having talks about that, and I'm sure that that is something which uh, which might be levied against uh, against Derek in the uh, in the hours and days to come. But that's uh, that's another, another argument after the fight. I think that all attention for the time being is on, is on the fight, which has now certainly been given a, a, an added edge. I'm assuming it has. John Rawlin, thanks very much for your time. I'll see you tomorrow. And I'm assuming that the 35 empty seats that Steve Lillis told me about just this afternoon, I'm assuming they're gone. You're watching the Box Nation countdown to Derek Delboy Chisora's quest, mission, journey to become the WBC heavyweight champion of the world against Vitaly Klitschko in Munich on Saturday night. We've been talking, we've been watching and we've been listening to the slap. We'll have more of that after these adverts. Welcome back. We've heard from Derek Delboy Chisora talking about the slap. He said they had it coming. They've messed me around for nearly two years. And then we saw John, we heard from John Rawling having watched him chase Derek Delboy Chisora out of the building to try and find out why he did it. And we saw a rare moment of anger. The comedy was gone from Derek Delboy Chisora's face. The fight is on. It is happening. It is in Munich. Now, it's not the first time that the British heavyweight has gone out to Munich, of all places, to fight for the WBC World Heavyweight Championship. It happened back in 1976 when Richard Dunn went out there. The Yorkshireman travelled out to face Muhammad Ali. He was up against it, was Richard Dunn. It was a hard and torrid night, and I'm delighted to say that Richard joins me on the line now. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? How are you? Fa uh, How's your health? How are you? Um, yeah, I'm getting there nice and steady, slowly but surely. Richard, can you remember what emotion you had when you found out that you were going to be fighting Muhammad Ali in Munich for the World Heavyweight Championship of the World? Oof, absolutely. Unbelievable. It, it was... I think every, like every part of me started shaking with excitement. It was going to be a great, great night for me. And I was going to enjoy myself as well as and I did. Now, Richard, how, how did you go about preparing to fight a guy that was already being called the greatest heavyweight of all time? Did you have to use anything different, anything special? It's not like you were just fighting one of the, you know, the regular Europeans or the regular British guys. Was there anything special in your in your preparations well how much different can you do <laughs> yep you know i run every day even harder than i normally run you know um you know you know i'm not changing the I, I train in the gym as um like as hard as possible as far as hard as possible i did all i thought you know what i mean that i could do and when you got out there richard and you finally came face to face with mohammed in, in Munich, it must have seemed like you were watching something from the outside, but really you were centre stage. You were the joint main attraction. Well, uh, I suppose so, you know what I mean? Um, it, it was like a fairy, um, you know I mean? a fairy story come true, quite true for, you know what I mean? Like I'd won the British title and the Commonwealth title and the European title. Yeah. There's only one place you can go then, and that's the world title. So, you know, I mean... You know, I mean, I was over the moon with it all. Uh, and when did the fairy tale start to go wrong, Richard? At what point? Was it on the day? Was it as you went to the ring? Or was it once you got in the ring that reality hit it. home? I don't pass it as going wrong. I had a, I had a hell of a night. Oh. It, it was fantastic. OK, I lost. But so you had a go. I, had, I did my very, very best. Yeah. And I'd like to wish Derek all the very, very best on his big night tomorrow night. You know, there's, there's great footage. I remember it clearly at the time. I was only about 12, 13 of you. And I can remember you gritting your teeth and stamping your, your lead foot down and throwing shots. You really did. You, you know that expression, Richard? You went down swinging. You certainly did go down swinging. <laughs> well, I tried anyway. You know, I mean, I went down five times, you know what I mean? But I got up five times. They don't think, you know what I mean? They don't remember that, you know what I mean? But I do. No, I, no, you know I, I mean, I was very proud of that. Yeah. 
So absolutely no regrets whatsoever. I mean, apart from obviously losing, but no regrets. None whatsoever. And if it were tomorrow, I'd, you know, you know, I'd still be enjoying it. Did you have much contact with Mohammed after the fight or, or in the years since? I've been, um, I think I've met him two or three times, actually. Uh, I was with him a year last, um, a, a year December over in Old Trafford. Yeah. He came over, but uh, it's not a good sight to see, to be quite true. No, it, it, you know, I, I wish they wouldn't take him on the road. I Richard, now, and finally, before I let you go, thanks for your time, and thanks for wishing Derek your best. I'll pass on to him. But I also remember, and, I can, and I've seen the footage, and I've looked at some of the pictures, that you were still given a hero's welcome back in Bradford. An open-top car parade through the town. A sports That's centre fantastic. named after you. It was absolutely fantastic. I was really proud of Bradford, um, and they were proud of me, apparently, you know what I mean? Because they named the sports centre after me, as you've just said, um, and it's still there to this very day. Oh. And uh, it was a wonderful homecoming, wonderful. Oh, Richard, it's been an absolute delight and a pleasure to speak to you today. Richard Dunn, thanks so much for your time. OK, Stevie, bye-bye now. Take but, care. Thanks, fella. That's Richard... Richard Dunn, when we made contact with him, it turns out he, he, he's familiar with the show and watches the show, which was absolutely brilliant. I got John, joined, but I'm still joined in the gym. Oh, sorry, not in the gym. There I am. I'm still joined in the gym. There you go. There's, you've only been <laughs> in the gym. Come down. You've only been now, in the gym 48 years. I'm just saying it. I'm still joined in the studio by, uh, by it feels like you go through the workout in here, by Johnny Oliver, uh, who, who worked with Derek from the very very first day he walked through the, through the gym. Now, he mentioned something quite interesting there, Richard. He talked about when he came back, he was given a hero's welcome. Even no, he'd lost in five, been down five times, and he said good up five times. Now, now here's the thing. Derek Chazor is not going to get that yet, is he? And no. will he ever get that, do you no. think, John? I don't think so. Now, is that it's because no. he's sometimes his own worst enemy? Well, it's what happened today. It's what's happened in the past. He's his own worst enemy. Yeah. You know, uh, unfortunately. I mean, I love him to death. We love each other to death. Yeah. But, uh, I'm not with him because he's a loose cannon. He's likely to do anything, and I don't yeah. want to have no part of that. But you know, but, you know I, I've had I've had him. You know, I've had him on different shows of mine. In fact, yeah. I had him on you know, before he before yeah. he won the novices. Yeah. So we're going back four That's or five right, yeah. years now. Yeah. The one thing that strikes me about him is that, uh, and John, you know him a lot better than I do, mm. mate. And if I'm wrong, absolutely tell me. But. I don't actually think he's a bad person. No. I just mm. think, you know, as you say, you, you know, you use the expression loose cannon, mm. and he sort of does, sometimes does things that perhaps he doesn't think through. I probably know him, I would say I know him more than anybody. Yeah. Because I've had that special contact, um, and I do know him. Mm. I know him better than he knows himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the truth. Um, you know, but I wouldn't be a bad carrier or just a carrier of bag. Now, 18 months ago, he phoned me up. And he said, I've got a world title fight. And I thought he was one of these jokes. This is the first Klitschko, the, the first, first Vladimir yeah, fight. Vladimir. I said, you're having a joke. And he said, no, he said, I've got a fight. I said, who with? He's a Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko. I said, you must be nuts. I think he'd had 14 <laughs> fights at that time or something. I said, what did Frank Warren say? He said, he said, no. I said, what did Dean Powell say? He said, no. I said, well, what's the matter with you, nuts? <laughs> he, said, I've, he said, I only get one chance. He, and I said, well, I'll make you right. I said, but it's your last chance. Yeah. It, said, <laughs> it is interesting what you say there, because that first Vladimir fight, which was, I think, sort of announced in about the September of yeah. 2010 for, yeah. the, for the December. Um, it, I remember that because uh, Frank Warren wasn't keen, wasn't happy, no. spent the night and then still wasn't happy. Of course, no. Derek... You know, the worst thing you can oh, do yeah. is ask a... F you know that, John. You've been, mm. in, the, you've been in, the, what, the Finchley 48 years 48 now? Years. And, you know, the last thing you can do is ask a fighter if he wants a fight. <laughs> no. Do, 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 you know, what's the, mo what's the, what's the worst state thing you can ever say to a fighter? <laughs> Would you like to fight? Of course he'd like to fight. That's why he's in the gym. He's a fighter. Yeah, you, can you can't stop him. You can't stop him. Listen, John, you stay with me. We'll carry on talking. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get a few more guests up from random, part random parts of Europe here on Box Nations. We prepare for Vlad Vladimir Klitschko, not Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko, yeah, yeah. to defend his WBC heavyweight championship of the world against our very own Derek Dilbert. You're talking, think Vladimir is going to get a slap, according to Derek. Yeah, you dwell on that. We'll have these adverts. See you in a minute or two. Oh, I tell you, that's a bit tasty, that one, isn't it? Eh? <laughs>
I mean, we're talking about Vitaly Klitschko and Derek Delboy Chisora. Then you see that coming up on May the 5th, and that is very, very tasty. Now, uh, we've already spoken to Frank Warren, who's over in Munich, although his plane was late, so he missed the slap. We spoke to John Rawling, who very much saw the slap and looked a bit shaken up. We spoke to Derek Delboy Chisora, who didn't regret the slap. Let's speak to a man who was on the stage wearing a Chisora t-shirt and I heard him trying to keep the calm, whispering out the side of his mouth, the TV cameras, the TV cameras. Let's speak to Dean Powell. Dean, are you there? I'm there, Steve. I'm all attention, mate. D Dino, it looked, um, it looked a little bit, um, well, a bit shocking. It looked, and also looked a bit like it could have spilt over and become very nasty. What was your, what is your position and what was your perception? Well, you saw where I was, Steve. I was right at the back, and I was yep. trying to, you know, trying to obviously when, when, when Derek walked away, I sort of caught, caught hold of his arm and, you know, try to calm, calm it down a little bit. Um, but I was kind of at the back of everything, to be truthful. Yeah. Now, Dean, you know, you, it, I'm assuming you travelled with him over to there, or you were with him before it all happened? No, I travelled I, I travelled on Wednesday, so I've been here since Wednesday. No, no, I'm talking about on the way from his hotel out in the snow, up in the Bavarian Alps, to the venue. Was there any suggestion that Derek was going to go for that? He says it only came to him when he got on the scowls, and he started to think how the Klitschko's had messed him around. But what about you, yeah. Dean? What say you? No, I think he's. I think. I, I, I think. You know, with Derek, I think everything sort of came back to him. He's been sort of messed around with it. You know, with the cancellation and and and, and the pull out and everything. You know, and you know, who knows, Steve? Listen, he's a fighter, and you know, who knows what goes through their mind in that situation? You know, I haven't been in that situation, so I really can't comment on it. No, but at the same time, as John Rawlin uh, spoke about not 10 minutes ago on this show, it does seem finally that a fighter's managed to penetrate that thick protective skin that the Klitschko's drape around themselves to keep other yeah. people off them. Yes. Yeah. Is, is it... I mean, it was totally, it was totally unexpected. I think, I think everybody was surprised when... When Vitali came over here, our friend him and Derek were. Yeah. So I think it was as big a shock to Vitali as he was as he was probably Derek doing it in the first place, you know. But, but Derek has been hinting for a long time now that it's not going to stay this way. It's not going to stay at loving. We're not going to yeah, go into the ring hand in hand singing nursery rhymes. Yeah, no, he did say that, didn't he? He said that on several occasions, Steve. In fact, he said it when we sat around the table, if you remember. He did indeed. In, um, in, the, in the Landmark Hotel. Now, but Lee, let me ask you this. We saw some footage that you've probably not seen. When Derek leaves the building, John Rawling goes downstairs with him. Luckily, it wasn't upstairs, or Rawling would have been exhausted. He goes downstairs with him and gets him outside, and Derek is genuinely spitting thunder. Now, are you, a, are you slightly concerned, slightly concerned, that if Derek can lose his head and call like he did at the weigh-in there, that he could repeat that in the ring, which could have absolute, you know, outrageously bad results? Yeah, you know what, Steve? I, I didn't see him when he went outside because I went into the rules meeting. Okay. But, you know, I'm sure that all calm will be restored, to, restored tomorrow, you know, Don Charles will, uh, will sit him down and talk to him. Frank will sit down and talk to him tomorrow. And I'm sure that we're going to see a great fight on Box Nation tomorrow night. Now, Dean, you can't say too much about what went on in the rules meeting, but uh, what did go on? And was there any suggestion that Derek could find himself in hot water and a few euros lighter because of that little slap? No, that wasn't discussed. And, um, you know, the question was, was, was Vitaly OK? And Fritz said, yes, fine. So... You know, we got on with the rules meeting as normal. And uh, we've just been over the venue, myself and Francis Warren, just to check the walkway, the ring, you know, the ring walk sure, and have a look sure. at a few things. And uh, we're all ready to go to work tomorrow night, Steve. Because that's something that they did with the, with David Hay, if you remember rightly. The Klitschko switched the ring, ring, ring way, the ring walk. So that when David Hay came out, he went this way, dead end, went this way, dead end. It was like playing a computer game. And he finally got to the ring after a lot of going to in and fro in, if you remember rightly. So that, so you're right to have done that. That's exactly what that, that's exactly what we've done today. That's why Francis and myself have gone over. You know, Andy Ailey, our events manager back in London, has discussed this and ironed out all these things that we've we've gone through today. 
And, uh, you know, his experience in this and his input has been vital, you know. He's like at HQ. Aileen's at HQ. He's sort of like, uh, yeah. you're all out there. He's telling yeah. you what to do. He's telling you what to check for. He's in, he, he's, he, he's in Ailing Towers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dino, it's a pleasure. I'll tell you one... Steve, but like, Steve, Steve you Go can't on. buy that experience. No, no. <laughs> you know, he's gone through a few things with me today and different things with Francis. And, uh, you know, we've just spent a, a good hour and a half over at the venue... Look, looking at different things, what are going to go on tomorrow, so uh, yeah. we're ready to go. Dino, you know, you're absolutely right. You can't buy the experience that men like Andy Ailey, men like yourself, have got. And Dino, finally, if, we, if you just take your T-shirt off for a second, not because I want to see you topless, and I'll take my jacket off. And we... you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to see me topless where I am at the moment, Exactly, Steve. and, and we both go... There's snow outside the hotel. Dino, we both go here, <laughs> over here on the left as boxing fans. I'm looking forward to this one even more now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm looking forward to a great night. Dino, it's always a pleasure. I'm get... excited. Get... I'm not as excited as you, Steve, but I'm excited. Oh, I get it. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very excitable boy. Dino, put your gilet back on. We'll speak to you later on. Everyone's got a I'll team chisel gilet. See you tonight. See you tonight. Yeah, see you tonight. I'm there by, by 11. Way. See you later, Dino. That's Dean, Dean Powell. I've known Dean an awful, awful long, awful long time. So that, this is the thing. John, everyone seems to think that he's going to stay calm, remain calm. You've been it. You've looked inside Derek's head. You've seen him both amateur and pro. When he came down the stairs there in that little bit of film, he looked very excited, didn't he? I Good think, or bad um, thing, Johnny Oliver? I think he's lost it. I think personally he's lost it. Now, that could be bad for the fight. Uh, possibly. It'd be bad for Derek. If that's the way he comes in, if they can't calm him down... Mm. And, um, but, he's in serious trouble. But then, of course, the flip side of that might be is that, that that might allow him to get over any fear, get through any pain, and actually have a go. Because the way to beat Klitschko is not hard. It's just hard to put into place. You can, you know, to beat them is easy. You get inside their punches and you throw more punches than they well, throw. Nobody's beating but, no, but, but no, that's what I said. <laughs> it's, it's easy to work out what to do. And perhaps you need something. Perhaps you need something like Derek had there today, which, which is going to get his adrenaline pumping as well as Vitality's. Perhaps. Playing devil's advocate, John. Well, I, I wish Derek all the best. I honestly do. Sure. And I hope that he can pull it off. Sure. Um, and at least he can do the 12 rounds. Seriously, yeah. I seriously wish that. But no. I just can't see it happening. Not no. against this monster. The man's a monster. He's a monster. But here's the thing, John. I'm wondering, mm. you know, when he's pushed back, they never throw punches going back mm. because the fighters don't, take, don't actually take the initiative and push them back. You know, if a guy's in front of them and they throw two jabs, mm. the goes go back, then, the, then no one moves out of that zone to chase them. So you look at the succession of fighters, especially the guys that Vitaly's for, good fighters, John, on paper. Mm. You know, yeah. not bums. Let's get no, that. Let's no, get that right. Class. And something happens to them in the fight. But what? What if, OK, and I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm clutching the straws, but what if one fighter gets in there and does go underneath the jab and then brings a big right over? Is it, I'll tell you what it is. Exactly, what if someone actually d does exactly what you'd tell him to do if you had a fighter going against a Klitschko? Uh, well, possibly. I think, personally, I think Derek is too face-on. Yep. Uh, he's got no, uh, no defence. He comes square on. If you're going to come square on to a Klitschko, you are in serious trouble. Now, I know he's going to duck and dive and bob and weave and try and get in. It's the only way he's going to do it to Klitschko, sure. any of them. But Klitschko is too tall, he's too big, and he's too strong. And he's, he's just like a, yeah. he's just like a, a robot. But they, must have some, but they must also have something else, because there's a lot of tall guys, a lot of strong guys, and there's lots of guys that are robotic. But for some reason, no, no one can actually get close to and, and push these guys back. One or two guys have done it in their, their combined 100-odd fights. And I'm wondering if they've got terrific timing. If they've got terrific eye, because David Hay was caught out for speed. Now, David Hay, you know, for all of his other flaws, and people dislike him or don't like him, I personally love him. I do. Uh, but, I do. But, but, for, but, but for all of that, Hay is fast. That's one thing That's even fast. his enemies can't take and away from him. Punch. And, and the Klitschko or Vladimir, I know, I know Vladimir is slightly faster, he seemed to be even faster, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. So that might, that might be it, maybe timing. Well, I don't think um, Derek's got the tools. Uh, when, you, when you look at down the line... Lennox Lewis was a great, a great fighter. Yeah. And, and Klitschko was in front of him. It was only, he only got beat on a cut eye. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, we've, built, we've been building up all week here a really hard case <clears> for <throat> Derek to win and a case that he's going to have to go out and fight out of his skin and shock people. Now, one group of guys that he probably won't shock, um, 
One, one group of people that he probably won't shock will be the bookies. And when we come back after these adverts, we're going to be speaking to someone who knows a bit about betting form. And let's face it, the bookies know a little bit as well, don't they? See you in a second. Did you see how fresh Cotto looked when he lands those two good shots and he moves back? So moves back for Margarita's counter. I tell you what, that May 5th fight is taking on just a little bit of edge. Now, before the break, we talked about the odds, and I said I'm going to be giving you some of the odds and one or two of the uh, different types of odd bets that are out there. And I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by a man that's done a bit of work for Box Nation, but I do an awful lot of work with him. Lee Phelps, I believe, is on the line now. Lee! Hi, Bunty. How you doing, mate? Yeah, Lee, first and foremost, has the slap changed anything dramatically by any chance? Not really, no. I've noticed a few people on Twitter questioning whether that'll put uh, more of a kind of a, a mean edge to Vitaly Klitschko and want to get the, the job done early. But no change to the outright odds. He's still 16 to 1 on, and, uh, and Del Delvoy is 7 to 1 to get the win. The draw is still 33 to 1. And the big thing is, I mean, you look at the, what Vitali's done. Three men, I think, in the eighth. One in the ninth, two in the tenth, one in the twelfth. That's his big thing, eight through twelve. So if you do that as a cluster, Vitali to stop Derek Del Boy Chisori in the last four rounds. Give me the best that's out there, Lee, on that bet. The sensible yeah, bet, I mean, people would say. If you go, uh, if you go uh, Klitschko ten to twelve, for instance, you're yeah. looking at a price of uh, of seven to two there. If you go a little bit wider than that, if you go seven to twelve, and that encompasses all those rounds, doesn't it? That's six to four. I think that's a cracking bet. You're getting odds against for Klitschko to do what he pretty much always does. Yes, yeah. That's to win in round seven to twelve. Obviously, you need him to win. He can't go to points for that. But in round seven to twelve, if he stops Chisora, you're getting paid out at six to four for that. I think that's a good bet. What, what, what's Vitali on points? Assuming he gets rocked and then doesn't want to get involved. Yeah, which is a possibility. Yeah, isn't it's yeah, a possibility. That's, that's just, uh, uh, by, by trying to, to win by decision or a technical decision. No, points, uh, points, but a full distance. Yeah, 7-2. to 7-2. to two. What about Derek to pull it off, to go into the trenches and stop Vitali at about round 8 or 9? Now, come on, I'm dreaming. I'm allowed to dream. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> you, you are. If you want to go just specifically, uh, Del Boy to finish him in round 8, for instance, 80-1, yeah. to one, round 9, 80-1, to one, round 10, hundreds. Obviously, you can lump those together. Uh, Del Boy to do it in, like, 10 to 12. You're looking at uh, a price of, uh, of 33 to 1 there. So there's some decent ones. What about Chisora to do it early? What if he, if he launches in there? Go think on, I can get a better than the slap. Rounds 1 to 6, Chisora, is 25 to 1. Or, even more outlandish, what if he stops him in the first 60 seconds? Yeah. Just goes in there with a huge uppercut. Yeah. Uh, 250 to 1, Bunty. 250 <laughs> is it worth 50 p? Hey, listen, he's going to go and throw that shot at the start. And, and you saw from the way Vitaly reacted to the slap. He, he can be caught early and, he's, and he freezes. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Lee. Any crazy bets? Odd bets? I'm thinking about disqualification. <laughs> What's Derek to be disqualified? Uh, well, you, basically, what they do is they lump in the uh, the disqualification with all the yeah, the, the KO, the TKO, oh, the technical draw, and all that sort of stuff. But I can see what you're thinking there. I mean, yeah. Vitaly is short. It's one to four to stop him full stop, and that that includes the disqualification. Um, I mean, another nice one is I know you've been thinking about that. You know, when we watched that to that fight against Adam Mackin, there may be some little like, weaknesses in Klitschko's armor. Well, what about Klitschko to take account? But still win. That's fourteen to one. That's one nice. Four, fourteen. I like that one. Yeah, looks decent, doesn't it? But my, I think my favourite bet of all that I've found is Klitschko to win in rounds eight to twelve, yeah. or and you get both of these in, or on points. That's four to five. It's now, bad, as, as you said at the outset, since his comeback, eight fights, eight wins. The only one where that wouldn't have landed was against Solis, who obviously did his knee off, whatever. Um, you know, so that's the only one. The others have been eight round stoppage, nine, ten, twelve yeah, round point. decision, ten, ten, twelve. So I like that. Four to five, it's a touch of odds on, but four to five for him to win in rounds eight to twelve or on points. I think it's, you can get a bit of both worlds, eh? Now, I'll tell you what they don't have bets for, Lee, and I'll leave you with this. You don't have to come back at the end. They don't have bets for how brave you are and how much of your heart you show. If they did, I'll tell you what, I'd be lumping a good few quid on Derek Delboy, because he won't let us down in that market. Lee Phelps, thanks very much indeed.
Cheers, mate. See you later, Lee. Thanks very much. Uh, well, the, the, the odds say it all, don't they? I mean, you've got you've almost got him on even to uh, go for a late <laughs> stoppage. Got and, going, and, and you've got me going laying out. And you've got quick. Derek on, on <laughs> eighty to one stoppage. Eighty to Ooh. one stoppage. Now, you've been around Derek, as as as, as I say, John. Yeah. Um, in the 24 hours or the 12 hours before a big fight, let's say his ABA finals or when he was up in the four nations, does he change from the Derek from two days earlier or a week earlier? And do you think there'll be any problems, you know, keeping him calm? No. No? It he can switch there, off. There wasn't. He, uh, when I was with him, he switches off. Yeah. Uh, and that's when you, you step back and you, you leave him on your own. Because... Um, is a religious man, a, a, you know, he is a religious man, a lot yeah. of people don't know that. Uh, and I, I used to leave him alone, uh, when we turned pro, exactly the same, leave him alone. Um, then the outrageous thing started to happen and, and you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just parted the miserably. Yeah. It's funny you should mention that leave him alone, because I, uh, I spoke to Don Charles yeah. um, uh, <clears throat> pre previously, and I've got him on the line now, and that's one of the things Don said, that he gives him a bit of space. Don, are you there? I'm here, Steve. Yeah, Don, I saw you on the stage. I've got to ask you the inevitable question about the slap. Uh, did you know anything about it? And were you uh, were you as shocked as Vitaly Klitschko looked? Um, yes, um, I didn't know. The team, the whole team, we had no inclination of what Chisora was going to do. What was your... um, So it was um, a shocking moment for all of us because we are totally unaware. The, the and it cost us all a bad surprise. What about what was your reaction afterwards, Don? And what do you think? Maybe now, you know, a couple of hours since it happened. What, what's your take on it now? Well, I mean, it was a mad, very mad moment. Um, we were shocked, like everybody else. Sure. And um, like I said, um, Frank Warren, the manager, the promoter, he's going to deal with it. Um, I'm just a trainer, but as a trainer, you don't obviously train your fighter to do such things. Sure. After all, it's a sport, and that was not very sporting. Mm. Um, if it was done to my fighter, I would be crying blue murder. Yeah, good point. And um, hey, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm actually distressed about it because there's a lot on the line here. Are, are, are you distressed because it, Derek maybe has gone too far? Well, you could. Where, you, where do you draw the line? And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, yeah, that you know, like I said, if it was done to, to Derek, for instance, if another an opponent did that to him, I wouldn't be happy about it. Mm. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to deal with it internally. Um, um, you know, Frank Warren, like I said, the promoter, the manager, he will deal with it in the best way he feels yeah. should be dealt with. No. Um, I've I've since spoken to Derek. If I can give you a little bit of an insight of, of what, because, you know, you have Please. to try and, try and to, you know, understand, not to justify, but to understand his actions. He tells me he was very wound up because of how they've treated him, the Klitschko's, um, from the previous fight with his, uh, that never happened, uh, yeah. the younger brother. Um, so, again, I'm, he's not, I don't believe that's justification, but... I tried to get some kind of, uh, since that incident happened, I've spoken to him and um, those were his words. As, as in, I mean, he's not, I believe he regrets it. He's just spare at the moment, as he put it, you know. Um, Don, are you, worried that you, are you worried that an outburst like that could spill over once the first round starts and he might do something else that could be deemed foolish in a fight where keeping well, his head is important? Well, of course, I mean, look, if Vitaly had no intentions of coming out aggressively, he definitely will now. Yes. Because I would, if I was Vitaly, I definitely would. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I believe, um, you know, you're going to see, the public are going to see a fight tomorrow. Um, so, um, but again, I'm still very alarmed. I'm very upset because, like I said, you know, <laughs> this could have uh, gone pretty nasty, as in, you know, Anything could have happened. Could have turned out, could have quite turned out quite nasty because if if Vitaly had re reacted to, to to that to that incident, um, you know, who knows what what would have happened on that stage. So, but like I said, 
Listen, um, Frank isn't Frank's dealing with it. I've spoken to Frank and he's, he's, he assures me and he's going to um, deal with it. And you're both going to deal. Look at it. Yeah. Well, you, you know what, Don? It's I can tell from your voice that uh, it's shaking you up. Listen, I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Steve. Thanks care. very much, Don Charles. There okay. clearly. Okay. I tell you what, he certainly was. Now we haven't got. We're running out of time, John. But you, you, also, John, if I'm not mistaken, after 48 years, after yeah. 48 years, you finished. Yes. Yeah. Finished the Finchley. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and we'll, so we'll, we'll get you back in to talk about where you go from here. But here on Box Nation, we will be in Munich tomorrow night. Derek Delboy Chisora, Vitaly Klitschko, the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Come join us, eh? Boxing is about famous victories. And those upsets on nights you'll never forget. If you've watched this one with us tonight, you have watched something special. Boxing is about guts. Oh, big uppercut! And glory. That would have knocked out a lesser man. Boxing is about the champions and the challengers. This crowd going absolutely bonkers. Boxing is about heroes. Last few seconds of a dramatic sixth round. And villains. Boxing is about victors and the vanquished. One of the best heavyweight fights I've seen for some considerable time. Could Saturday, the 18th of February, be another moment in boxing history as Britain's Derek Chisora challenges Vitaly Klitschko for the WBC World Heavyweight title? The bigger they are, Klitschko versus Chisora, Saturday, the 18th of February, live and exclusive on the undisputed new home of boxing, Box Nation.